This screencast shows an example of working with branches in Git. For example, creating a feature branch to develop a new feature without interfering with the main code. I've forked the Homework 2 Rotten Potatoes repository, and as you can see on GitHub, right now there's only one branch, which is the master branch, the one that all repositories start out with. I've also cloned the repository onto my local computer, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new branch so that I can add a new feature where we're going to add reviews to our database. So the first thing I'll do is create the branch, and then I'll use git checkout to switch to the new branch. The book describes a neat hack that you can do if you're using a Unix-like system, including Mac OS, to make the current git branch name that you're editing appear as part of your shell prompt. I'm using that here, and you can see that when I used git checkout, my prompt changed from master to reviews as a visual reminder of which branch I'm operating on. The first thing I'll do is simulate adding a new feature to our app. I'll edit the movie.rb file to say that a movie has many reviews. And I'll create a new file, review.rb, to hold the review model. Of course, we have to add these files to GitHub. And if we show git status, we can see that movie.rb has been modified. And there's an untracked file, the one that we just created, review.rb. So let's add both of these files. And we'll commit our changes. At this point, we've committed our changes to our new branch called reviews. And as we'll see in a moment, they don't affect the master branch. We can use git branch to list which branches exist and to show which one is the current one with an asterisk next to it, reviews. However, one thing we haven't done is to push this branch to the remote. In other words, right now, we can opt switch between the reviews branch and the master branch, but nobody else who checks out the code from our same repo would be able to do that. If we want to push the branch and make it available to other developers, we have to specifically push it. And unlike what we've done before, now we're going to use the full version of the push command, which states which repo we're pushing to and which branch we want to push. This form of the push command means push the reviews branch and give the branch the same name on the origin. Once we do that, we can flip back to GitHub, reload our page, and now we can see that there are two branches. Reviews is a new branch that has never been merged into master. Meanwhile, back on our local computer, we can switch back to the master branch. And if we take a look at our movie.rb file, we can see that we've got the old version that makes no mention of reviews. Furthermore, if we list the contents of the models directory, we see that movie.rb is here, but review.rb is absent. That's because we only added that file in the branch, not in the master. Whenever we switch branches, Git automatically rearranges the files in our working directory to make it match the branch that we're in. This is an important caveat because I still have an editor that is open on review.rb, but this is not the same file that is now checked out in the repo. If I edit this file, my changes aren't going to go to the right place. So whenever you switch branches, you should make sure that you reload all of the files in your editor. So we'll switch back to movie.rb and reload it. And we can see that the current version of movie in the master branch indeed doesn't have our changes. At this point, we've finished our feature, and we've tested it, and we want to merge it into the master branch. One thing we can do is we can do a git diff and get a summary of the differences between the master branch and files on the reviews branch. We could even do this for a single file, just like that. Once we're satisfied, we can merge the reviews branch. And now, if we look at our movie.rb file, it's got our change in it. The merge creates a new commit, so if we run git log, we can actually see the merge commit that we just added in. What happens if we made a mistake, and it turns out that we really shouldn't have performed the merge at all, and we like to get the master branch back to the way it was before we did the merge? There's two ways to do this. So far, we haven't actually pushed our merged version of the master branch back to the repo. In this case, the easiest thing to do is just to pretend the merge commit never happened. The way we do that is we use git log to identify the commit immediately prior to the one we're trying to undo the merge from. 
here's the merge commit up here and the previous commit was this one. We'll just copy and paste that entire git commit ID and then we'll do a git reset dash dash hard which means throw away all changes that have occurred since that commit. And sure enough, the head of the repo is now at this older revision and if we look at the movie.rb file, the merge change where we added a line to bring reviews in is now gone. On the other hand, if you had already pushed, it might be problematic to do a git reset because other people might have already pulled and gotten the merge commit. In this case, resetting will just create a historical discontinuity. In that case, what you can do is use git revert instead of git reset. The idea is the same, except that instead of throwing away the merge commit, it actually will create a new commit that looks just like the one that you specify on the command line. So it's the equivalent of having done the merge and then manually undoing the merge, but in a way that preserves history for everybody. So that's a summary of how to use the lightweight branching feature of Git to easily manage things like feature tracking branches in a way that doesn't interfere with other developers.